Okay, so uh, now that we are, have uh, covered exporting geometry and getting it ready for Mastercam, we're actually going to go through uh, a little bit of Mastercam. We're not going to go um, too into this. I'm going to show you guys how to set up some tool paths, uh, select your tools, uh, and then also export this out to um, a Thermwood CNC mill. Okay, uh, so the first thing we need to do is obviously we need to get our uh, geometry open. So we're going to go file open. Uh, in the last demo, I saved this to the desktop. Uh, so I'll go ahead and select that. And you'll note that uh, the geometry doesn't necessarily appear. Um, this, it is sitting in there. It's just that we're right now we're sitting at the zero zero coordinate, uh, and so we need to do a zoom to fit right in here. You should pay attention to these uh, tools as you go through this because it's uh, it's really important that you be able to reorient yourself. Um, the modeling and uh, visual tools, uh, visual movement tools in Mastercam. Uh, do leave something to be desired, so it's uh, something you want to pay attention to. So you're going to have to do a lot of fitting and zoom windows and stuff like that. Um, and there's your orbit, uh, uh, dynamic orbit as well. Okay, so uh, moving on. What we have here is we have our geometry. Uh, we have our surfaces. Uh, if we, uh, we can go ahead and cover how to mill those. We have our contours, and then we have uh, our cutouts. So, and if we, this has all uh, been set up so that if we zoom out, uh, you'll notice we don't see, I didn't export our frame cuts, uh, I just assume, it's assumed or implied that you have located your geometry ahead of time. Um, if you don't, uh, a lot of the times the machine will error out uh, ahead of time because you'll uh, move beyond the boundaries and things like that. If not, you'll plunge into the table and you'll cost uh, yourself a lot of money, destroy your material and things like that, so pay attention to that. Um, so what we need to do first is we need to set our machine type. Um, for this, we're going to be using a mill and Mastercam, which you, you shouldn't have to do this. Whoever your machine you're using uh, you'll will enable you to set this up. Uh, we have a MMD file uh, which enables us to write toolpaths for Mastercam, so you can Thermwood Mastercam post. So we'll select that. And you'll notice over here we get a new machine group here uh, titled Thermwood. Okay. Uh, and you'll note this, again, the flickering of the screen here is uh, just something that the software decided it needed to do. Um, so what we have here is moving from, uh, just to, to the next step here, we're going to go to toolpaths. Uh, and so you have a couple of different options here, uh, and this moves in complexity. We have contour toolpaths, drilling, pocketing, basically anything is based on line. Line work is going to be in the upper top uh, portion of this. Uh, and then we have servicing toolpaths, uh, if we're doing a roughing pass for, or a finishing pass. Um, those are relevant to um, what it is you're doing with the surfacing. We'll cover the actual surfacing when I go through the site model um, stuff a little bit more. And then we have some other uh, sort of miscellaneous stuff where we can start to do some more complex uh, geometric deformation for, of the toolpaths. Uh, for what we're going to be doing, we're essentially going to be just doing some uh, contour toolpaths. Uh, so I'm going to select that. Uh, and now it pops up here, and there's a couple things you need to pay attention to uh, when you're looking at this. First is you get a bunch of different selection options. Uh, I'm going to use the window selection tool, which means I can just draw a window, and it's going anything within that window is going to get um, selected. The other thing you need to pay attention to is this little prompt popped up right here. Uh, that's all you get. That's about equivalent to the command line in, in Rhino. Um, a lot of times that'll pop up in random places uh, on the screen, depending on where, uh, how big your screen is and what the resolution is. You want to pay attention because um, sometimes you'll be running commands and it'll be asking you for something and you'll be wondering why it's not doing anything. Uh, and it's very likely that um, this is floating around somewhere in your screen and you just can't see it. Uh, so that said, we can go ahead and uh, Zoom in. All right. And so I'm going to go ahead and draw a window here. Oh, now you can see everything got selected there. Uh, again, is Mastercam's a little bit weird with about all that. And I missed one, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll move this back into chain. I'll select that. All right, and then once I'm done, I can go ahead and uh, check the box. Something you do want to pay attention to in this uh, as you're going through here, for each one of these contours, if you were to select a chain, uh, it's going to give you a start and an end. So the red indicates the end, and there's actually a green arrow here that indicates the start. Um, and then it, this is a dark green. If it, it would be light green if it were to imply that it starts at it, um, moving out of the material. Um, and as this is um, a brighter red, this is moving out of the material. Uh, so it's 
if the color shifts, don't get, don't be surprised. It's just a little visual cue uh, about how the the information is going to be drawn here. And so, uh, one thing you do want to pay attention, though, uh, there's a point to what I'm talking about, is that you can come in here and you can reverse the directions of that. Uh, this becomes relevant as you start to control some of the spindle speeds and, and information with that and, and uh, the cut direction and get really into the specifics of the tool. Uh, you want to pay attention to that, uh, particularly if you're cutting against wood grain or if you're cutting against uh, into a material that is fragile, things like that. Um, that you, you, Mastercam allows you a lot of fine-tuned uh, abilities with this. Uh, the other thing you want to pay attention, you guys can see here, this is sort of fragmented and pixelated. Um, this is just a sort of generic version of that. Uh, so that when you're looking at this, we get a, um, a simplified uh, representation of that. Okay, so we hit that. Uh, and so you know, now you see here, we have now a toolpath group. It's called Contouring 3D, because it, it already has observed that these are 3D contours. Uh, and so now we have to set up parameters. So we're going to go ahead and select a tool from the library. And uh, I've gone through and uh, done some of my own programming uh, on the library here. It doesn't look like it actually maintained any of that. Uh, but let's go ahead and see if I can't. Oh, that's okay. We'll just go ahead and generate our own tool. Tool 300 um, corresponds to a tool in the machine that I've actually been utilizing. Um, this is important that you pay attention to this because um, for more advanced uh, CNC mills, the tool is associated with the tool changer uh, and it associates that number with the machine. So when we actually export this to um, to create the, the G code for the mill, uh, it'll use this number to call out the tool path, uh, sorry, the tool. And so we want to make sure that we pay attention to that. And I'm going to go ahead and edit this quickly here. Uh, so we'll set this to 0 0.01. So we, I'm just setting this up so we can visualize this and we'll save that to the library. All right, and now as you can see it's an engraver, diameter one inch. Um, I'm gonna be, you guys saw from the previous images here that I used a V-bit to, um, to cut that out. We have feed rate, plunge rate, uh, spindle speed, uh, and retract. Um, you're gonna always want rapid retract. Um, I haven't encountered a situation where you don't. Um, the feed rate, uh, for the thermwood, the, it maxes out at about uh, 500. Uh, don't ask me where that number comes from. I think it, I believe it's inches per minute or something, something to that extent. Um, but what we can do here is um, we can set this to 400. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, the machine will enable has a knob that will enable it to be go to about 120 percent speed. Uh, so that'll put if we add 20 percent to 400, that'll put us at um, at a really nice, comfortable uh, 500 here. So that gives us the full capacity of the machine if we decide that we want to use that. Uh, but otherwise, we can use the dial on the machine to adjust that. Uh, spindle speed, uh, you want to pay attention to this based on the material. Uh, if we're cutting into something, we really want a nice finished edge uh, or hard wood. I like using uh, higher numbers. Uh, again, that's something you're just going to have to dial in with experience. This was CNC milled into oak. Uh, all right, and the next step here is on the next tab we have the contours here. Um, there's a couple of different spacing uh, parameters here that we need to set. Uh, I usually like to have my retract uh, about a one inch, uh, and the reason for that is uh, that sets us up so that we can, it gives us a lot of space so uh, it doesn't give it, make us feel anxious that the machine is accidentally going to plunge. Um, I usually do the same thing, giving the feed plane about a half an inch. Um, that way we have an inch and a half between our, us and the material as it pulls itself out and moves to the next tool path. Uh, the absolute top of stock, um, this is going to be essentially measuring where the top of the geometry is. Um, you, for 3D contouring, we don't really need to pay attention to that. Um, and, and it's essentially we're going to be um, adjusting that over here. We should know where our geometry and stock is located essentially ahead of time. So. Uh, the, th the, the big thing you want to pay attention to on this screen is if you have your compensation on. Uh, you'll note if you see this little diagram here, there's this uh, circle which is a representation of the tool path moving along the path. And it's not centered on the path, okay? Uh, even though the tip is. So I'm going to go ahead and turn compensation off and you'll note now that the, the tool is going to be moving directly along the path in the X and Y and direct, directly along the path in the Z. Okay, uh, that's really important uh, as you guys are contouring this and when you guys are setting stuff up because you can 
Uh, obviously, if you have a box or bounding geometry uh, like we do in here, we can offset that so that it actually compensates and, and moves around that geometry. Um, down here, we don't want to have any lead in or lead outs. Uh, that's another thing I haven't really uh, found. That's um, probably for more advanced manufacturing. Uh, not probably, it is for more advanced manufacturing where you have um, uh, denser materials and you uh, have to spend more time tooling out. Uh, but for the thermwood, and since we're just doing some uh, engraving details, we don't need to be leading in and leading out and uh, potentially damaging our pattern. Uh, so, okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit the check mark. And now it's going to go through and process all of our toolpaths here. And you can see that this is all upgraded. And right now it's, there's an X here and it's writing those tools. So I'm going to go into uh, axonometric view and fit. All right, and you can see here there's a couple of things going on. I'm going to see if I can't zoom in. So each one of these blue lines represents the tool. Uh, there's also the geometry sitting up in there. And then uh, this is where it's retracting and moving to the next line. And you'll notice because I use the window, uh, it automatically organized to optimize this for speed. Uh, and if we actually fit this, uh, where I had to add that extra one, it's actually jogging back and starting over at the beginning. Um, so I could have reselected that. Uh, since it's only one line, I'm probably not going to be too concerned with that. Although time is something you do want to pay attention to. OK, uh, and so once we get through that, uh, there's two more things that we want to do. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here, which is not a small portion of this. Uh, and if we come over here, the last thing we, we can do, uh, this is, enables us to black back plot. Uh, if we want to look at our toolpaths, if we right click on this, uh, what we get is this little demo. And you can see that now we have a, uh, the appearance of some stock. And we, I'm going to go ahead and just beef this up so it'll move pretty quickly. I would hit play on this. Uh, this will demo our CNC toolpaths here. And you can see some of the patterns that are uh, starting to come up from our V-bit. So that looks pretty good. Um, there's a couple of things you want to pay attention to in here. Uh, when it's gold is means that it's being cut, green is mean it's in the stock, and then uh, if it has any errors, um, there'll be a little red portion of that, uh, which means it either takes a plunge into the table or it does something um, bad, basically, essentially. Uh, and, and so you want to pay attention to those details. Uh, so, and we that's not wasn't really a good representation. So if we go into our parameters, we can adjust the top of stock. And remember, we you know this is 1.38 inches. We hit the check mark. Uh, if we click on this, uh, left click, we can regenerate those toolpaths. We can go ahead and. You can see Mastercam's doing its uh, weird, rend weird rendering. Okay. And while this is rebuilding and thinking, um, what we can do is, if, if you want, the next step we're going to be doing here is exporting this to the G code processor uh, and actually setting this up uh, for the CNC mill. If you want to ever, there's going to be a point when we actually export the G code where we can start to. Um, adjust the offsets on this. So if you haven't located this, you realize that uh, there's a four inch offset instead of a three inch offset, we'll get another opportunity to start to adjust that um, down the road. So uh, just be aware of uh, that there is an opportunity once you've exported the geometry and um, for us to process that. Uh, if I right click on this, you'll notice my stock is now thicker. If I hit play, now we're looking at uh, probably a more uh, accurate representation of what I was uh, going to do with the CNC mill here. And you can, you'll can you note that this is working uh, perfectly. I'm not going to go through this because obviously this takes a lot of time, but you can come in here and adjust these parameters so that it'll update relatively quickly. Uh, and I would recommend that you always, always, always check this. It's uh, This takes 30 seconds. If you cut into your stock, it's going to take you another trip out to Lowe's uh, and you're going to damage your material, cost yourself money, uh, and it's only because you weren't patient enough to go through the, uh, the process of checking your information here. Uh, so just measure twice, cut once. All right, so I'll go ahead and stop that. Close that out. And we'll go on to this. OK, and so the last thing we need to do now is export this to uh, the, the Thermwood Post processor, uh, so we actually are going to pr be producing the G code. Uh, so if I hit the G code G1 here, uh, it's most machines automatically pick this up. I'm going to be exporting this. Uh, Mastercam works in NC file format, 
Um, that's the only file format I need. I don't need an NCI file. Uh, so we'll go ahead and hit the check mark for that. And it's going to save it. it MasterCam always tries to save it to a weird location. Uh, you can probably adjust that, but I just hit desktop. And so this is where we get that opportunity that I talked about previously to adjust this. So if we realize that we're in a four inch offset, um, previously our machine is, uh, we set this up for uh, a three inch offset. So we have 120 uh, by 60 is the size of our bed. Uh, if we realize that there's a four inch offset, then we can go 119, start to adjust that. Pay attention to that. It might be worth your time just to re rewrite the file, but uh, there is some opportunity for you to adjust that. And this is going to create a notepad editable file uh, so that you can start to go through that. But essentially what this is asking for is the bed of the machine. What's the machine size? So it can locate the geometry appropriately. So the X, X long axis is 120. Short axis is 60. And the Z shift, This is I, I like to do this. If you want to um, test your file before you actually cut into it, say you have a a $200 piece of wood that you really want to make sure you get it right on the first first try. Uh, you can Z shift this um, up to six inches, depends on the machine, uh, but you can have the machine hover and float over this um, while it writes the tool paths. And when you're ready to it, you can adjust this parameter back down to zero uh, and you can essentially be ready to go. All right, and so now this is going to process the tool path and then we'll actually get it to go through and, and see our, our tools visualized here and it popped up on my other screen. All right, uh, and so first thing we're going to look at here, we have the title of our project, all the information when it was written. Um, it's going to be used tool 300, which has a one inch diameter. Uh, then we're going to be looking at this, the X axis, the Y axis, the Z axis. We can edit these things if we want in Notepad. Uh, fixture offset, don't need to worry about that. Uh, but down here we have our, uh, our spindle speed, uh, S21,000. Uh, and then we have our tool call out here. This is T300. It's going to call our tool. And then this sets, tells us it's going to move in um, the X, Y, and Z axis M3. And then we go, go through this. This is uh, all of the coordinates that this is going to go through. And if you pull this down, there are 50, roughly 55,000 lines of code that this is going to go through to cut out this file. Uh, and when I cut this out, it took about an hour to, to get through all this. So. All right, uh, and that should get you covered.